Hi, welcome to Three Things Thursday with Robert Hertel. So we're entering the midway part of 2017, and for some of you, you're sitting there going, man, we're only halfway through the year. I've already hit all my goals. It's fantastic. I thought it was later on in the year. For those of you that are saying that, congratulations for hitting your goals for the year already. Keep the momentum going. Keep the energy going. Have an even bigger 2017 than you thought you were going to have. The biggest year you've ever had. All right? Now, on the other side of the fence, there are some of you that are going, holy crap. We're halfway through the year. I haven't even got started yet. What have I been doing? Well, the good news is you still have another half of the year. So get off your butt, get positive, get energy, and go out there and hit your goals for 2017. There's still time to do it. You gotta put the work in though. So either way, no matter where you're at, know that there's still time available to have a monster 2017. It's all about having that mindset, okay? But what I've been doing now that we're at the halfway point is that I've been talking with a lot of agents that have had a lot of success for this year and trying to figure out what they're doing differently than other agents that's making them successful. So I, I did this with a lot of different agents from all over different areas, and I came across 10 common habits that all of them are doing that's making them successful in 2017. I mean, it's a different market, right? It's low inventory, seller's market, home selling for list price and above, most places across the country. So you had to adjust a little bit of what we're doing. And we've talked a lot about that in previous videos. But what I figured out, I narrowed it down here to 10 common habits that effective agents are having in 2017. So what we're gonna do over the next three weeks is we're gonna go over three a week. With the third week, we'll go over four. So there'll be a bonus three things Thursday, three weeks from now, we'll go over four things, all right? But I wanna break it down, 10 habits that effective agents are having in 2017. Now, one of the things that everyone talks about that you've heard, it should be ingrained in your head, is prospecting. Why we have to continue to prospect or in the talk to people business, right? I didn't include that in these 10, right? I went a little off script here. I figured you've heard the prospecting, you know it, right? Have that in your head. If you don't know it yet, you better get on it, okay? Because that's definitely the one that's always on there. But 10 habits that effective agents 2017 are doing that's giving them the abilities to close listings in this tight inventory market, to still work with buyers in this tight inventory market. They're having monster years. They're going to have their biggest years ever. Okay, so let's go over these. So the first three, this week we're going to go over one through three, okay? In no particular order. First one is this, habits of effective agents for 2017. They are disciplined who they work with and where they work. Okay, disciplined who they work with and where they work. So what I mean by that is who they work with is they're focused on sellers, right? It's a low inventory market. You have to be a great listing agent. Focus on that. Focus on listings, okay? Go out there, door knock, prospect, whatever the case may be, let them know what's going on in the market. It's a hot market right now for sellers. Focus on being a listing agent. Make that your priority, okay? Expire listings for sale by owners, all these other sources. Go make that your priority, being a listing agent, okay? But I get it, we work with buyers. There has to be a buyer in every transaction, so we're still working with buyers. So when you're working with buyers, though, is you have to have strict qualifications for buyers before you work with them. Too many of us are spending too much time being tour guides, driving buyers around. Oh, I'm interested in buying a property. Great, come on in. Where do you want to go? Oh, you want to go here, 15 miles over here, 20 miles over here? Spending all day just driving people around. Mainly because you don't want to prospect, so you think you have this golden lead. You have to have strict qualifications for buyers now as much as ever with this tight market. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting all your time. So, a couple of examples is, number one, the buyer has to meet you in your office for a buyer consultation. Okay, you talk over the phone, you send some emails, send some properties. They're not engaged. Right? If they're willing to come to your office, that means they're more motivated. Okay? They're engaged in the process and it keeps you in control. If they're not willing to come to your office and meet for a buyer consultation, how willing are they going to be to go see property? Right? They have to come to your office for a buyer consultation. And if you don't have a buyer consultation set up, set one of those up so that way when they get to the office, you're not just sitting there going, thanks for coming. Right? Have a buyer consultation set up. All right? The other thing is this, make sure they are extremely motivated. Not just motivated, extremely motivated. Can't be, well, you know, you know we want to buy, but you know, you know, we get the right place. 
That's not going to work. They're not going to get to the right place. Not at that level. They have to be, we need to move. Okay. We got to, we're renting. We're tired of renting. Our rent's going up. We got to get to a place. Interest rates going up. Prices are going up. We got to get to a place now. Okay. Our place is too small. We got to upgrade. Our place is too big. We got to downsize. Okay. They're looking to buy. They're extremely motivated to buy. Cause you got to think of it this way too. In this market, most of where you're at, if you get a listing, does a buyer have a couple weeks to just, okay, yeah, no, I, well, I can't see it this week, but maybe next week. Can they do that? No. Most of the time, a listing, if it's priced right in a good area, you're going to get offers right away. You're going to be in escrow or pending right away. So you have to make sure your buyers are extremely motivated because you say, hey, look, this, this just hit the market. We got to go see it. Uh, I can't see it this week then there's no reason to send them that property, show them that property, okay? They have to be extremely motivated. The other thing is this, make sure they're pre-approved, right? This seems basic, but I run into this all the time. Are they pre-approved? Well, they're a cash buyer. I don't care. Do you have proof of funds? Well, no, but it's a cash buyer. Oh, okay, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Everyone has the exact amount of money that they say they do. Okay, great, you know? You get the proof of funds. Wait, I thought you said you were buying cash. Oh, no, the money's coming. Oh, okay, good luck with that. No. Even if they're buying cash, you got to get pre-approved. No, 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 I'll be fine. I'll, I'll get a loan and put down a big down payment. You got to be pre-approved, okay? Fully pre-approved, make sure it does that. Uh, another one is show a max of three properties at a time, okay? You go out there, you're showing six properties. We're professionals, and if you ask me, we go see six properties, and you say, hey, Robert, which one's your favorite? I'm like, well, I don't really remember one, two, or three. I kind of remember four, I got five, I got six, so I guess six, because that's the one I remember. But yet you spent hours showing me all six properties, max of three properties. So those are just examples. Set your own, but have strict buyer qualifications, right? So that's who they work with. Where they work, there's a great quote. Neil Schwartz always says, get bigger by getting smaller. Focus on your core area. I get when you get a license, you can cover the whole state. So in California, where I'm at, people go, well, I, I have a California real estate license. I can do it everywhere. So you live in LA and you're selling property in Fresno. That's not going to work. You don't know that area. Oh no, I got a buddy that lives in Sacramento. Oh, okay, good luck with that. Focus on a core area, okay? Be the agent of that area, know that market, be that market. Don't spend hours driving back and forth and doing all these other things when your time could be spent better doing other things. So focus on a core area. Don't be afraid to refer business, get a referral fee. We have agents that do this all the time. It's out of their market and they say, well, I know agents do they'll refer it to them and get a referral fee. Refer business out, get something out of it, but don't spend time going back and forth. So get bigger by getting smaller. So that's number one. Second habit of Effective Age 2017 is that they are masters of their schedules, okay? So I always go to a great quote from Valerie Caro, who's a Mike Ferry agent out in Arizona, does amazing deals. And she says, the tighter your schedule, the more freedom you will have, okay? We got into real estate because we're like, I don't want to create a schedule. I don't want any structure. All right, well, how's that working? Okay, you have to create a schedule, all right? Meaning that you have to have a time to go to work, you have to have a time to be off work, and you have to put in time blocks. So your morning can't be, well, you know, my morning I'll do some prospecting, and in the afternoon I'll do some, uh, you know, some administration work. No, put it in the calendar. I'm gonna be at work by nine, okay? And from nine to 12, time block, I'm prospecting. 12 to one, I'm doing lunch. One to three, I'm doing listing presentation um, recordings, okay? Three to four, I'm doing administration work, and then five to seven, I'm doing appointments, all right? Have it time block set up. They're masters of their schedule. They don't let anything affect it. And always remember, the most important part of your schedule is the morning. You gotta have a morning routine, and the biggest thing is you gotta have a time to be at work, all right? Yeah, let me ask you this. If you worked at, say, a restaurant, and your shift started at nine o'clock and you showed up at 9.30, would that be okay? No, get fired. Or your shift starts at nine, you get there at nine, so I'm here, but then I'm getting set up, I'm getting something to drink, I'm doing all this, so you're not actually starting your work until 9.20, 9.30. Does that work? No. Have the same type of thing here. Start your day at whatever time. Maybe it's seven, maybe it's 7.30, 8, 8.30, 9, whatever the case may be, but have a set start to your day, put that in your calendar, all right? So masters of their schedule. And we talked about in my video last week about how to be more productive in the afternoon. So make sure you go back and watch that one about creating your schedule in the afternoon. All right, the third thing is this, is that they are master presenters. Now here's the thing, when we talk about master presenters, we talk about the listing presentation for the most part. 
But when I'm talking about these agents that are successful in 2017, they are master presenters on everything. Let me ask you this. Is showing homes a presentation? Of course it is. Is showing offers a presentation? Is asking for a price reduction a presentation? All of them are presentations, including the listing presentation. You have to be a great presenter at all of them. You can't be bad at price reduction presentation. Ah, oh, hey, uh, I know we listed at 700, but um, I was thinking maybe, uh, you know, if you're okay with it and I don't know, maybe we could lower it to, you know, like six, 650 or something. What the hell is that? That's not a good presentation. You have to be a great presenter on all aspects. Now it starts with the listing presentation, that's your most important. And so what they're doing is they're recording the listing presentation. We've talked about that before too. Make sure you're recording your listing presentation at least every other week, preferably every week, so you get better at it. Because if you don't get any listings, then it doesn't matter if you're a good presenter or presenting offers or price reductions or anything along those lines, okay? But be a great presenter on everything. And that's all skills. Price reduction is a skill. Showing offers is a skill. Showing homes is a skill. Listing presentation is a skill. Be a great presenter at everything. All right? So those are the first three of the 10, all right, of habits of effective age of 2017. Discipline who they work with and where they work. Masters of their schedule. Master presenters, okay? So start implementing those in your business this week. Next week, we'll go over four through six, all right? But that's your three things Thursday for the week. Please subscribe to my channel so you get all my other coaching videos for the week. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week.